Uh, Keith, I'll send you the recording via YouTube, and then we can edit it however we want. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. I appreciate y'all doing this. So uh, as far as the interview, do uh, y'all want me just to start it off and hit you guys up with questions, see what you're doing now? And, you know, I have an intro for you guys, so it's all, I mean, it's good to go. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll roll with it. We're, we're pretty easy. Hey, that's not what I hear. Ah. <laughs> Bloopers! <laughs> all right, just let me know when you're ready to start it. Ready. All right, three... Two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Nothing Held Back podcast, hangout, video cast, whatever cool name you want to give it today. This is what it is. Uh, I am here with two gentlemen that I was quite excited to uh, do a podcast with, and now obviously a hangout. Um, let me just kind of go back a little ways. Uh, quite some time ago, probably three years ago, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you guys came out with a product that uh, was revolutionary in the Facebook world. Uh, it had nothing to do with necessarily buying traffic at the time. It was just a very unique strategy. I implemented it and saw some pretty interesting success. And we'll get into all of this in just a second. This is just an intro to these two gentlemen. Um, fast forward a little bit. I ran into them at a party in California that, uh, that was just a little on the crazy side. Uh, fast forward again, these guys became superstars in the Facebook world, and you're going to understand why in just a few moments. Uh, between their organic strategies and their paid strategies, uh, they are on the forefront of Facebook marketing. As a matter of fact, there's only three people that I listen to when it comes to Facebook marketing, uh, and these guys are one of those three. I'm counting them both as one. Uh, I've spent time with them in New York, spent time with them on the other coast, uh, so, you know, I have the highest respect for these gentlemen. Uh, it's Guy and Elan Fr uh, Ferdman. Uh, Elon, I'm sorry, buddy. That's, uh, you know, I'm Texan, man. I can't say anything correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, I even see that accent will probably do a better job than most. Yeah, well, I do my, my own last name, man, in, in the military. It was, let's just call this an R-rated podcast for a second, man. I, uh, I was known as Bastard in the uh, military, so uh, <laughs> nobody could say Baxter correctly. Um <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just jump into this, guys, because um, the Facebook wheel strategy from way back when uh, was a game changer. You guys are doing some new stuff now, some paid stuff that is just as interesting. Um, you know, outside of giving away the farm, you know, just tell us what you're up to right now. That's that's what I'm fascinated with. So let's start with this and just say that Facebook marketing doesn't work, so everyone stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, well, hold on, hold on. Wait just a second, because didn't somebody come out and say that on your Facebook page or something to that, to that effect? Well, so that's a funny story. So uh, there's a video going around like a few months back, and Guy and I always laugh about this, because it comes out every like three, four months. Someone tries to create something super controversial, and uh, I think the company was Veritasium. They came out with this video about like how Facebook is a sham and it doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. And Guy and I, everyone's coming to us and saying, is this true? Is it true? Uh, you know, is, is what he's saying, is Facebook marketing not working anymore, blah, blah, blah. And Guy and I are like, yes, it doesn't yes. work anymore. It's 100% true. It, <laughs> yeah, do not look at our bank accounts. Do not look at yeah. our students. Do not look at anything like that. Go on, keep working SEO. Is then just use your, you know. It's funny. A lot of people are, uh, you know, that they they talk to me and they're like, oh man, so what's the latest SEO strategy? You know what I tell them? Facebook. <laughs> SEO strategy. Us, us too. Yeah. Us you too. know. So if, you know those that are coming to me, I'm like, guys, you know, th this is this is a train that's been moving forward, and now with the advent of Facebook rolling out their own retargeting systems. Uh, you know, they're uh, just, and it's kind of funny because a lot of us have been doing dark posts for quite some time, but just all of a sudden now it's, it's you know, people are, you know, hearing the term dark post and, uh, you know, with the ads manager becoming a lot easier and the power editor getting more robust. Uh, so let's talk about some of this stuff because, you know, those, if I were to say to you guys, and I, I, this is a very legit question, if I were to say to you guys, look, I'm broke. I need to. I have got to make ten thousand dollars a month in fairly short order to pay my bills. I would turn to you guys and pose that question, 
And what kind of response would you give to something like that? Yeah. You want to go, guy? That's a that's a tough one in today's world. Uh, I don't uh, <laughs> I don't know that there are purely organic strategies left on Facebook anymore. Uh, maybe you're applying some that that we should learn about, but. I know for years uh, Facebook was touting the you know get likes, buy likes. We did that for a long time. We have pages well over 200,000 people. Uh, our personal page is over 120,000. I could tell you organic reach is ne near at an absolute zero. Uh, looking at just some of the things that we're playing with today, um, if you could get yourself into the right network of people, I would say CPA, like white hat CPA on Facebook is probably just, the just quickest. Just say what that is, people know. Okay, so CPA is a cost per action. Uh, essentially, it means that you are generating sales for a company and they're paying you a fixed revenue for that sale uh, versus maybe a commission structure. So even if it's a free shipping offer, uh, the company will pay you, let's say, 45 to $50 for someone to go through a free ship offer. Pretty much everyone on the web has seen one of these, fat loss, you know, health supplement, whatever, but there's a lot of these that are you know, outside of those niches as well. Um, and in my opinion, um, if you can network up with the right people and have them show you the ropes in terms of CPA marketing today, probably the quickest and best way to make money. Well, I just want to piggyback off that. So the first thing I would say to someone that said, I want to make $10,000, my first question would be, what's your knowledge level and what are your resources available to you right now? Because a lot of students come to us and they also, I feel like $10,000 seems to be that magic number. Uh, but if someone says I want to make ten thousand dollars and I ask the next question you know how much money do you have to spend in advertising and they tell me a hundred dollars then I pretty much tell them that their views are completely unrealistic yeah. and I think for a lot of people they make this mistake where and Keith I mean you can attest to this our business just because it's online and you see all these amazing people touting all these stories how I made a hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars three hundred and forty four and 27 cents in six days uh, and everyone thinks that this is something that they can do but the reality of it is this is still very much a business just like any other business and it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of skill to be able to create those results so I'll tell you a quick little story we were on a we, we train inside of a community called the Six Figure Mentors and, and a kid You're taking the words right out of my mouth by the way I was literally about to tell the same story so we, we took, we, and this kind of give people some context before I answer the question. So this kid who, you know, like anyone else starting out, asked a very smart question because we had taken an ad and spent something like $300 on, on a set of ads, and it turned into, guy, it was something like 15000 13000 what was the exact amount? Yeah, like we just hit, we happened to hit the bullseye, we made about like $15,000 off like $300, which yeah. is not, you know, like everyday occurrences, I wish, but this particular okay. situation it was. But so so that, so we, we don't say how much we spent on the ad, we just say, hey, listen, we did this in this strategy, and we, you know, we earned $15,000 doing it. And this, this smart kid who had just started out says something like, well, how much did you spend on the ad? And me, being half, an, half a wise ass and half actually being serious, I said, well over half a million dollars. <laughs> and I think everyone kind of like stopped and was like, well, that's a terrible return on investment. But, yeah. uh, you know, on the actual ad, we actually spent 300 bucks. But if you ask me what it took to be able to put up 300 bucks to make $15,000, it was probably you know the over half a million dollars that we spent in advertising to learn what works and what doesn't. Yeah, th th guys, thanks for driving that home because you know we've all spent a lot of money on advertising, and oh. I am the first to tell you that I have lost way. I mean, in in the early stage of any ad medium, uh, whether it be Bing or Facebook or Google AdWords back in the day, I spent a lot of money. And got quite depressed at certain times because it's all you're doing is draining money. Yeah. But when you figure it out, that's when it starts to work. You know, I'm just now, and guys, this is truth admission. I'm just now making YouTube ads work. I had tons of failures with YouTube ads for quite some time. Uh, but one thing that I want to drive in with you guys and those that are struggling with Facebook is once you find mentors like you who do teach it and teach the methods, it does take that learning curve from a half a million spent to maybe a couple thousand spent exactly. before you figure it out. So, 
yeah, you know, I do want to put that into context. You literally took the words out of my mouth because, you know, going back to your original question, which is, okay, I want to make $10,000. How do I do that? Well, the first thing I would ask people is, you know, what's your education level and how much money are you willing to invest? Once I know that, I can kind of gear them, you know, so there's like products out there, or little trainings, whether they're free or not, it depends. But, you know, for 100 to 300 bucks, you can get a pretty good background training in Facebook advertising. But I love what you said, Keith, because honestly, when we try anything new, any media, our, in our brain, we know that we are going to invest between five to $10,000, of which we will not see a penny back in order to learn that medium. But once we invest that money, and I say invest, not lose, we invest that money in educating ourselves on how to use that medium, then the next 5,000 that we spend in advertising, that is already gonna give us some sort of money. Uh, you know, some good ROI, some good return. So what you said is brilliant, and it's something we learned early on, and I think everyone that I've ever spoken to um, in, in some of the masterminds that we're in who is, in fact, successful is we hired mentors. We were smart enough to realize that, look, we can go out and spend $10,000, and it'll literally be like throwing money away, or you can pretty much spend half of that to find a good mentor. Um, I mean, we work with people for, for half of that, and we show them how to take their business knowledge in Facebook from literally, you know, next to nothing to mastery in 90 days. And then at that point, your creativity and your ability to think on your feet and be comfortable and know that you can put out a dollar and get two back or three back or five back, whatever it might be. And then at that point, I can already have a different conversation with you and say, listen, realistically, if you want to make $10,000, you need to be willing to spend you know, three, four, five thousand dollars in advertising to have that be a consistent effort. Unless you get, you know, like Guy and I, we've gotten smart and lucky at the same time. Um, Facebook is still its own entity, like Google AdWords and YouTube, right? Like you can do something this month and it'll work amazing, and then you do the same thing next month, and all of a sudden it doesn't do the same thing. And if this is the difference, if you don't have a mentor, you, then the only thing you learn is how to put this thing into this hole with this weapon, and that's all you can do. But if you can actually think on your feet and say, okay, that didn't work, what if I try this way, or something like that, because you can get creative, then you have a tool. Then you have mastery. Um, right. And I'm sure you in the SEO game, it's like, you know, Google comes out, changes something, and like the whole world implodes. Yeah, it's actually SEO is not even a part of my strategy for the most part anymore, simply because of all the changes. You know, it's interesting. You know, uh, coming back to mentors, uh, I I am an avid buyer uh, of products, and a lot of people are like, you know, Keith, you've been doing this so. Why are you buying all these products? And and my point is, is I allocate one hour a day to training, hmm. and there's always one thing that I'm going to learn that's going to accelerate something that I'm doing and right now I'm on a kick with these these Facebook courses which is fascinating and something that I, the next point that I want to get into with you guys is there some of those like you guys that have figured out Facebook are really getting to the point of sophisticated internal funnels within the advertising platform itself such as multi-pixel retargeting uh, you know just you know you know you know the conversion strategies from multi you know, from one page to the next to the next and then you know different times of drop, dropping uh, conversion pixel placements and things like that and that's exciting for me because now we're seeing you know what was 80 cents a click we're getting it down to 12 cents a click and just you know having just massive paydays with that so what is you know let's talk, let's talk cutting edge because the the viewers the listeners of this podcast for the most part, are more on the advanced side of things. Awesome. Guys that are doing it, these are the doers in the trenches, guys. I want to hit them hard. So tell me one thing that you guys are doing right now that is absolutely blowing things up. Uh, and it doesn't have to be an overall strategy. I'm not, you know, I don't want you to give away the farm or anything, but just one yep. thing that somebody can implement right now. 
I mean, we, we started uh, 2014 with uh, a vision in mind, and that, as crazy and counterintuitive as this is going to sound, uh, of actually getting off email marketing. That was our, that was our number one goal. We said um, <clears throat> it's never been all that lucrative for us. We really look at the last three years, and I know that some people do it really well, but me and Elon are not lead generation whores. It's just never been our business. We've always done quality over quantity. Um, it served us extremely well. We focus on the consumers that we already have. We look at how we can increase, um, you know, our overall value per consumer, and that's really how we've uh, substantially increased our income over the years. So we looked at what was happening with Gmail, and um, I know, like right now, they're going to add an unsubscribe button to the top, like a big unsubscribe button. But once they started kind of segmenting your inbox, we realized our viewership is way, way down. So unless you're one of these people that's willing to pay for, you know, 1,000, 2,000 leads a day and just keep smashing your list, you know, email marketing is probably not the right strategy for you. And so, and we don't feel that way. So when retargeting started coming around, we started looking at that. And a big eye-opener for us, um, I went to Traffic and Conversion Summit a few months back, and they were talking about the concept of uh, tripwires, right? And I couldn't agree more about how critical today it is to not create uh, necessarily a lead, but create a list of buyers. So in that respect, I do want an email list, but I want a, only an email list of buyers because the lead generation, the viewership, I mean, every every email we send, we're like, this is just, we're not getting a return back on this. So um, the biggest thing that we look for today is how to create and establish a relationship where there can even be an exchange of just $1 as quickly as possible from the, from the meeting point to making that exchange happen. And we just look at it, it's, it's just like sex. Like sex changes the relationship. Any exchange of money changes the relationship between you and a consumer. And from there, it's a completely different conversation that you can have with them. So we're looking to completely change, before we would set, sell our digital products, right, like our digital educational products, if you look at really what we're selling, we're selling hope, right? You hope that you buy this product. If you follow my blueprint, that you're going to get those results. And the honest truth is, just like every other industry, there's very few percentage of people who are willing to take the decisive action that's going to generate the results. Now, the formula is not flawed, but it's just the action that people are taking that is. So getting people to buy hope is very challenging, um, and that's why we have to use a lot of smart marketing tactics and be on the cutting edge of, all right, how do we pattern interrupt and how do we do all these crazy things that make you motivated to take more action and then how do we keep you in action? It's like a full-time job. Uh, but getting people through the door, uh, what we've learned this past year is uh, software development is becoming really big for us. We have a lot of different softwares in development right now. Uh, hopefully have another one ready in the about the next month or so. Um, and we're, so we're front-ending people with something that they can like tangibly see. I don't want to say touch because it's a digital product but that you show it to them, they could demo, and the person has a clear vision about, all right, I'm going to use this, and it's going to produce that result for me, or here's some way that I can leverage the software versus selling them on the hope, but then still back-ending them with, here's how we're using this software to get better results. So now here's our formula that goes along with the software, and we're creating these like bundle packages, and that's really changed our marketing this year, and I could tell you it's been probably the biggest breakthrough uh, in terms of our bottom line. That's huge. I, I love to hear that from you guys. That's, uh, you know, just like the whole death of Facebook, there's all these people going around saying the death of tripwires and things like that. And I just laugh at that because, quite frankly, th this is not a new concept whatsoever. No. Uh, but the reality is, is that it, it takes somebody, you know, t it takes a, uh, a big conference just to remind people of the importance of you know, do you want to spend a dollar to get somebody that's going to either unsubscribe or not get your email, or do you want to spend seven or eight dollars and get somebody that does spend that dollar with you that's then going to, in 30 days or so, spend a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, five thousand dollars with you? It yep. just this is and this is an advanced concept that not a lot of people grasp. But spend a little more to get the buyer instead of just some a looky loo that you have to then work your butt off to convince to become a customer or at the, and this is this is the funny one and being an affiliate marketer and you guys are too acquiring a customer for a dollar or so and then turning them over and giving that lead to somebody else to, to make the real money from yeah, yeah 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 and we stopped doing that like about a year ago you know we stopped segmenting our list we realize every time we're emailing and setting it to some affiliate offer you're basically segmenting your list and now creating competition for yourself so yeah maybe you get the quick buck but ultimately, in, in the long run, you're completely decimating your list. Um, yeah, so for, for us, again, I think there's 
I love that someone could take a software, get real world value, and what everyone needs to understand is most of the time when you're selling the software, just like you said, we're losing money. So if I'm selling a $10 software, my acquisition cost might be as high as, let's say, $20 per customer. So I did lose my $10, but what's making me the money is the product on the back end, which I know is a fantastic product, but my reach is so much bigger because I can sell the software because now I can go after small business. Now I can go after a lot of people who wouldn't have looked at the education before because our market overall is really small, and that's why, you know, like the make money internet marketing world, people think it's really big. It's really not that big when you compare it to niches like health and fitness, when you compare it to um, weight loss or, you know, Personal so many other niches that are just massive in size. Um, and, and, like, that's why when people say anything is dead, even if it is, it's dead for a market that's, like, that small because the strategies that you learn and the reason I always tell people, like, I don't love the make money space. It's not my favorite place to be. There's a lot of big egos here. I mean, I've met, I've met my share of assholes. We've been swindled a bunch of times. You know, it kind of goes back and forth. It's always a chess game. But why we stay here is because it keeps your edge really sharp. This is like where I sharpen my knife, right? Because I gotta be on top of what's the latest to keep making sales. Because I'm marketing to marketers, and that's the most difficult thing to do in the world. But the moment you step out, you step out of this niche into markets where people don't know any of these things. All these strategies are alive and well, and things that probably worked a year and a half ago are still kicking kicking ass over there. And you could do them. So it's like you come here to play, but you can step out and make your money in so many different places. And most people are very, very centrally focused on one thing. There, there's a guy, a friend of mine in the health space, and he's actually a ClickBank uh, in the health space, and it's just, and I won't tell who it is, but he'll know when he when he watches this. He <laughs> routinely makes over a thousand sales in the health market when he does anything, promotions, whatever. And the fact that you two are bodybuilders, I've seen both of you guys with your shirts off, even. <laughs> they are, they're kind of like, Creepy oh, side. Yes, I get that. It's a little like, hey, we're at a pool party. What are, you know, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> other, other I'm party. Gonna, yeah, it's a pool party, you know, it was at night. Very creepy, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's nothing like making making my guests awkward feel awkward. That's all. right. I love right. that. <laughs> so in, in all seriousness though, I mean he does kill it. And you guys are, you know, I'd be half surprised if y'all weren't in that same market too. That's I, a, I, y'all, y'all just sell in the IM space? So I want to just say a couple things. We we're in all niches and, and especially now with this CPA stuff, like we're gonna be in the diabetes niche and the diet plan niche and the products for women niche because The biggest issue with Facebook is scale, especially in the IM space, um, internet marketing or marketing general. Because the pool of people is so small, you know, there's only a group of people wanting a Facebook product. And then we start delving out to like the small business owners and stuff like that, but they're slowly starting to catch on that Facebook is actually here to stay and um, isn't kind of like this thing that's going to go away. And if you're not marketing on Facebook today as a small business, it's actually not that hard. You just need a few you know, tips and tricks, and, and you can really do some damage or, or really help out your business. But I just want to say a couple of things to point out to what Guy was saying before. Any expert marketer should know this, and I feel like most don't. You have to be willing to lose money to acquire a customer every single time. And the reason we're okay with that, like when we launched our software, it's a dollar trial to try the software, right? We were paying $32 for a dollar trial member. Now, I said that to my dad and he's like, you're retarded, like why would you ever do that? (laughs) That's stupid, right? And, and, you know, most people that I would say that to would also concur with that statement, right? That's a horrible investment. But when you have a funnel in place, a funnel that we've worked and tweaked and, and, and thought of for months, right? That out of, say, five people, or let's say ten people just to make numbers out, out of ten people that took that dollar trial, we get between four to five that end up buying a $200, $250 product almost in in the next 10 days, let's say. And of those people, we'll get one 
to join a mastermind that we run that can be anywhere from fifteen hundred to five thousand dollars and when you figure out all the customer lifetime value and this is like something that anybody that comes to me is like I want to hire you I say do you know your customer lifetime value and you will be shocked businesses that make millions of dollars have no freaking clue what their customer lifetime value is mm -hmm. but when you know that marketing is so easy because if you know that your customer lifetime value is for example six hundred and ninety two dollars right then you know you can spend three hundred dollars to acquire just one just one customer and you'll still be making four hundred bucks roughly yeah. on that customer the problem and, and the, the re I, you know the reason why is most people don't understand tracking and they don't understand how to yeah. track a customer from inception to the end hey guys I'm gonna switch gears on y'all just a little bit okay. because uh, We've talked about some great stuff, things that people need to know. Um, one of the questions that keeps coming into me, and I'm going to pose it to you guys because you're the experts, is there's a lot of guys, and myself included, uh, are in markets such as e-cigs, dating, and weight loss. You're selling supplements, weight loss pills, things that are getting our accounts banned left and right, ads disapprove, our ratio is getting too high, and our accounts go away. You know, when you are dealing with such lucrative markets like that and it's one thing just to say well don't go into the markets but that's not realistic in, in yeah. the real world so say somebody like myself who has you know an e-cig biz or something like that how do you you know how do you consult somebody that wants to, to advertise on Facebook but can't directly do it with their product so, so two things one I just want to say just to wrap up the last thought in regards to tracking, the biggest difference maker if you're marketing on Facebook is get quiet. Really? Don't, don't think about it. If you're marketing on Facebook, get quiet. Guy, what was it like a few months ago? We finally got it because the guy we hired to run some of our Facebook traffic had it. Guy, what, what did you say to me within an hour of getting that software? Yeah, I said uh, I feel like I just started marketing on Facebook for the first time. That's, see, I have some of these third-party, like, $300 tools that supposedly do the same thing, but everybody that I talk to tells me that, that, that it's night and day. It's not even in the same ballpark. That's what I'm saying. Before, you, before we talk about anything, right, like, we know that tracking is everything in marketing. If you're not tracking, you're not even fucking marketing. You're just throwing a bunch of money at a wall and hoping something comes back to you. But Quire for 99 bucks. Even if you're spend, and I don't care if your ad spend is four hundred dollars, take ninety nine of that dollars and invest it in Quaya, and then make that three hundred dollars do three times what it would have done if you spent four hundred. I'll, I'll tell you here's why, because we we actually used that tool when it first came out like three years ago. But back then the strategy was blanket blanket Facebook with as many ads as you can. I don't know if you still remember those days. Oh yeah. Um, and today obviously that's not the case. But look, usually if I'm doing a manual uh, like you know power editor or manual, I guess now I call it. Um, any type of ad, like I'll pick the keywords and I'll slowly get granular with it because I want to make sure the first of the keywords converting for me. And then once I see the keywords converting, then I'll start doing my splits, maybe in ages, maybe breaking down the sexes, maybe breaking down the countries. Quiet just allows you to do go straight to granular, right from the top. Wow. Yeah, really? just like I just start with granular now, so I pretty much break down by age, sex, country, right off the top. You can even uh, go as far as actually scheduling when ads turn on and off. And for any of you guys who've been on Facebook for any period of time, you know, you pause an a, a campaign, then you unpause it, and suddenly you're getting, like, all these leads flying in for, like, the next few hours, and then it kind of mitigates itself down. So you can actually do all these things that if you were really sitting there and, you know, doing it manually, you'd get better results. But here's a software that will uh, do it for you. Uh, and I also just wanted to go back real quick, and I know you want to proceed, but I just wanted to make the analogy, guys, that, like, when Keith calls us masters, like I look, don't look at mastery as a destination at all. I look at it like it's somebody who's willing to just be on the ride for as long for whatever it is, right? As long as you say you're not. Um, and what I always see, like even if you look at any sports stars who make it happen or anything like that, it's it's the concept of when you first start a mastery is that it's a sprint. The concept of somebody who's really doing it is it's a marathon. And everything, if you guys look at what we're talking about, is we've built a threshold for pain that's just larger than, or, or say wider than most people. So going into any campaign, we already know, we're probably gonna lose on this thing hundreds if not thousands of dollars just to figure out how to make it work. A new, a new marketer who's in a sprint will never think that way. 
they want to spend their five hundred dollars and they want to see it back. They don't understand the investment in the five hundred dollars to figure out how to make the next five hundred dollars. So just wanted to kind of put a bow on that okay. one. But um, let yeah. me let me answer your your question about these these uh, crazy markets. So first, and yeah. this is just my take. I like to stay within terms of service of Facebook because getting accounts banned and getting back onto Facebook where it used to be like snap your fingers, you're back on, no big deal, today is a big freaking pain in the ass and I'm not willing, the, the headache outweighs the amount of money that I can make for you know 30, 60, 90 days, however long, but if you're doing things not by the book, you're playing with fire, and it's not a, a matter of if you get burned, is you will get burned. So in these markets that Facebook is not that, um, there's a reason that, that they don't like certain things. One, when you go to a network, like a ad network or a CPA network or whatever, and you're trying to get certain, ad, uh, certain products to promote, right? You gotta assume that thousands of other people have the same exact offers, right? Yeah. And a small percentage of those is doing, let's just call it gray hat, black hat, shady shit, right? Most and of them. Because, yeah. Right? We all know that. Because in marketing, you're always trying to kind of push the envelope. And it's fine. I'm, I'm not, I don't judge people. People do really well. It's just, for me, that's kind of like a short-sighted business model, not a long-sighted, I'm going to build a business. So, because there are those kind of people, they kind of ruin it for everyone else. <laughs> so even if a product is really good, like say like a muscle maximizer or you know e-cigs, which which people are clearly buying everywhere, but there's some you know a couple assholes who are just out there and they're going to try to like spam the system and figure out ways to, and because they do that, Facebook is getting a lot of complaints from the users. Now Facebook, at the end of the day, even though they're have shareholders, which has actually helped us as marketers, uh, they still have customers that they have to appease. So if there's a lot of complaints, you're automatically getting lumped into that group. Yeah. Having said that, there are right ways to do things. And what Facebook likes is you educating customers. And I'll say this across the board because I've spoken to people even in the health and fitness space who have recently gone from straight to sale to actually having to build kind of like what Gary Vaynerchuk says with the jab, jab, right hook, who actually have to give people value on the front end and build a relationship. Whereas before it was like, you want to lose weight, check out this amazing 15 minute video and blah, blah, blah. And they just go that way. People aren't doing that anymore. Yeah. And so because of that, Facebook has given you tools to do it another way, which is send people great articles, educational style articles, that at the bottom, you have a call to action where they can go deeper, uh, where you can grab their email address. Because once the, the initial page that you take people to, that's what Facebook is going to discriminate against, right? So if you're trying to take people to a URL that's been blacklisted, well, you have no chance of getting it approved. Right. If oh. you're going to do something shady by creating, like, I know in a diet field, uh, people create these like articles or like websites that look like women's health with Oprah Winfrey giving a testimonial and all this kind of stuff. Well, guess what? People figure out that that's not real. They complain to Facebook and you and everyone else get screwed. Yeah. So what we found to be really interesting is you can still create these kind of articles but make them look generic. Make them look like someone's showing up to a blog. You know, like you've been to these articles where people rant about diet or fitness, but they give people some sort of education. Yeah. They give people some sort of knowledge that when the person got there, even if they don't go to the next step, they're like, they still feel like they got value. And yeah. Facebook is great with that. So in whatever it is that you're marketing, think from a standpoint of, okay, my consumer, what would educate them? What would they want to read? What would they want to listen to? What would they want to watch? Provide that for them. Drop a retargeting pixel mm -hmm. on any one of those things. Make sure there's some sort of call to action with a couple of hyperlinks, maybe a picture link and a, and a link on the bottom that says learn more. And that learn more can just take them to another page. 
once you take them off that initial page, Facebook does not give a shit where that page goes. Yeah, that's it. And that's Sam. I wanted to hear this from you because it's you know a lot of people are calling these pre-sale pages or intermediary pages. It's the fact of taking somebody outside. And I just wanted you to drive home that point, guys. We're already at the 45 minute mark or the 40 minute mark on this. I try to keep the podcast fairly short. Um, I want to wrap this up with a question that I always ask the experts. I'm going to make you guys uncomfortable here. Just All right. be aware of this, and I did not. So I'll take my, my shirt off. Let me take my shirt off first. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, wait a second. We already we already got to that one. So <laughs> here's here's the question. The question is, a, a consulting client comes to you, hands you a five thousand dollar check for the day, and in this consulting session, he or she says to you. Guys, this is what I want from you. The, the one thing that you hold so close to your chest that you're uncomfortable telling me what that one thing is, my question to you two is what would that one thing be that you told to that person mm -hmm. or that you would tell to that person? Remember, there's a $5,000 check there, so they yeah. are expecting and demanding the best from you. Mm. I'll say as crazy as crazy. First of all, as crazy as it sounds, I don't know that Elon and I have ever held back any secrets. And the only reason for that is we've just found that even if a thousand people buy our product, there's a three percent that actually ever do anything with it. So it's like a thousand people. We just created thirty person competition, and they're not as deep as we are, or at least in experience. Like even if they have the blueprint, experience plays a major role because. A lot of times I'll tell people, you know, when you do something for a long period of time, sometimes you can't explain why you're making a decision. It's very instinctual, and it's more of it, it becomes part of like your neuro, like not your neurologic like part, your nervous system almost. It's like an emotional guide. You just know if I do this, I'll make money, and you can't explain that to people. Uh, I don't know that we really hold back anything, bro. Is there anything you can think of that we don't tell anybody? <laughs> Give me. Is there a, is there a specific niche or like a specific uh, business that they're running? It's it's not anything to do with a niche. It's just you know, focused on your specialty at Facebook. If you know, is there, you know, for instance, there's a couple guys going out there talking about the multi-pixel strategy, which you yeah. know, the retargeting strategy, things yeah. like that. Is there anything on Facebook that you guys are doing that's working so extraordinarily well that you haven't decided to put it into a course yet? Maybe that's a better way to phrase that. I think if you would have asked us that question about six months to twelve to twelve months ago, what we were doing with custom audiences um, and retargeting was pretty interesting. But now that's it's pretty much at the forefront. I, I mean, I look at I look at anything, and I'm really not trying to be evasive. I'm really trying to think if we're doing anything that I think is that cutting edge. And I, I wouldn't say that there's anything right now. When we had Facebook Wheel, that that took us a while to put on the table. Because we were we were one of the very few people getting things approved on Facebook in a lot of niches that could not get anything approved, and I and we had nearly a hundred percent approval rate doing what we were doing, and that was it took us months to say okay we're going to put this out there, and we probably should have got paid a lot more money for putting that out there, mm -hmm. uh, but we just didn't know any better at the time. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had something that no. cool to share. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, you, guys, you guys should have, and I will tell you. You guys should that should have been at least a thousand dollar product. For yes, sure. I'm telling you that. Yeah, that was our first. That was our I'll, first product. We had no idea. I thought of two. I thought of two. So first, within custom audience, I know there's a lot of hub hub like you know they're banning all custom audience. Again, with in terms of service, there's a smart way to use custom audience. All the stuff you're hearing right now is mostly because of all these Teespring morons who like went and hacked the system to get people's names and age and all that kind of stuff and we're putting ads with like people's names on them I mean that freaks people out right like that's against terms of service with Facebook but if you own a website or a blog you can actually create custom audiences of people that visit your blog who don't necessarily come on Facebook and then actually retarget them um, using Facebook's retargeting system in a way that actually has them re-engage with you I think that's a really cool strategy that a lot of people don't use and I would also say to that, you got to start thinking from a multi-channel marketing standpoint. And this is something that I would say to people is Facebook is great, but it's one piece of the puzzle. Like, you know, when you get a client and they buy a dollar product, send them a letter in the mail. The open rate on that letter 
is going to be tenfold what an email is going to be. Yes. Because where people used to be excited about opening an email, now they're like, screw that. And now the mail is like, oh, cool, I got a letter. You know, I just bought a product from Elon. I'm now, his name's here. Like, what did he send me? They're going to be interested. They're going to open that, right? Um, send. Make sure you send people to podcasts. And I know, Keith, like, the reason we both started podcasts is because it's a great medium to connect with new people. Hey, um, just, just, and just based on what you just said, I, I have custom audiences set up on my blog, and that's how I bring a lot of my podcast listeners back, which also has a secondary SEO benefit from having the additional traffic. So that's exactly. validation for what you just said, brother. Exactly. And then the last thing I, I would say to any consulting client, and I think I do, one of the first questions I ask people, I look at their business model, and I will tell you right now that we focus more on cust increasing customer value for our consulting clients versus, because everyone's like, I want 50,000 new customers. And I'm like, well, what if instead, what's your customer value? And they'll send me 200 bucks. I'll say, well, what if instead of doing that, we quit, you know, 5x your customer lifetime value? So instead of getting 200 per customer, you get 1,000 per customer. Then you don't have to focus on getting so many customers. And the way to do that is most people don't have businesses where they have some sort of top tier product. Uh, and by top tier, I mean 1,000 and up. Yeah. And if you don't have that in your business, and I will say this flat out to any consulting client, like they, they launch a book and they're like, help me launch a book. I'm like, what comes after the book? And if they say nothing, then I'm like, we can't work together or we're going to need to do a lot of work together. <laughs> um, you have to have something on the back end. That's how you increase customer value, whether it's masterminds, whether it's consulting, whether it's live events, whether it's high-end programs. I don't care what it is. But if someone came to me and said, give me the secret for 5K, I'd say that you have to have a top tier back end. Must. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. And that's just validation from my very own mastermind. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Hey, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I know that you're both on different coasts, right? Yep. New York and Cali. So uh, the fact that we're able to work. time you spend uh, with each other without shirts on. That's what had me move out here, actually. Well, you know, it, that's what happens when I take my shirt off, usually. Yeah, that's, it, it happens that way. Trust me. Super Women star. and guys, it's just the weirdest phenomenon. Uh, <laughs> All over the country. You know, <laughs> greatest thing ever. All right, guys. Look, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you. Uh, this will be posted up, and anything that I can do for you guys, just holler at me, man. I'm very much into uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. So thank you. Likewise. Awesome. Loved hanging out with you, Keith. All right, brother. Of course, I'll take my shirt off, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have been lifted, dude. I almost look like you now. Almost. <laughs> He's getting there. That's it. Hey, is there a, so what do we need to do with this hangout at, at this point? 